statement condemned the attack, alleging that the attacks may have been orchestrated by desperate politicians because of Obi's outing in the state. Reporting on the incident, the media aide stated that the hoodlums threw heavy stones at Peter Obi's car, causing substantial damage to his vehicle, and that another set of thugs threw stones outside the stadium where they held their rally and damaged several vehicles. Hello guys, good morning, good afternoon, good evening, and welcome to this YouTube channel. If you're doing the first time you see this channel, make enough for you to hit on the red subscribe button. If you don't subscribe before, thank you and God bless you. And if you're doing the first time you see this Facebook page, pick in this blog, make enough for you to like and follow this page for more videos, updates to come your way. My people, one dash shall never end. Obedient, share this video. Make one watch hoodlums attack Peter Obi on campaign ground. Guys, share this video. Make one see what the APC and PDP try to do. They go attack Peter Obi on campaign ground. What did they do their campaign? Because they throw stone the media. Amen. PDP and APC will not plan and you know go work. On a plan to watch Peter Obi, eh? When I see a picture, I'll be go become the president of Nigeria. It not go work on a plan. Guys, share this video. Make on a watch this video. Make on a year waiting up for inside this video. They will they come back and put a one take on this video. Please do me a favor, share this video. Share this video with the combat guys. See you guys later. Campaign Council of the Labour Party on Tuesday raised the alarm that the party's presidential candidate, Peter Obi, was attacked by hoodlums in Casino State on his way to the airport after a rally in the state. Diron Onifade, the party's head of media, in a statement condemned the attack, alleging that the attacks may have been orchestrated by desperate politicians because of Obi's outing in the state. Reporting on the incident, the media aide stated that the hoodlums threw heavy stones at Peter Obi's car, causing substantial damage to his vehicle, and that another set of thugs threw stones outside the stadium where they held their rally and damaged several vehicles. Peter Obi had met with women in a town hall and then held a hugely successful rally at the Mohammed Diko Stadium where he promised to end insecurity and poverty if elected. Since I left the Anambra State, they've not bought me a bottle of water. I gave the land. I give blood to everybody. Oh, several number nine. Go and check. Not one piece of land was given to me by government of Anam Brasil. Other people give their wives, give their children. My children did not, I did not do contracts. My children did not contract. No consultancy job. Nothing. That's what we want. I will fight corruption. I want to help people stealing public money. They will come here and tell you they have structure. That structure is structure of poverty. Structure of no lights. Structure of killing. Structure of insecurity. That structure is structure we want to take away. I bring structure of human being. You voted for umbrella. You leaked. And nearly hunger came on you. You voted for broom. They are sweeping you into hunger. Now we want you to vote for human being. In another development, reactions have chilled the endorsement of Labour Party presidential candidate by Islamic preachers in Kano State as Nigeria's next president. Some of the followers of the group who spoke to an NTA reporter said the decision to endorse Obi ahead of the forthcoming presidential election was based on his integrity, character, competence, accountability, and track record, and that the endorsement was not in Kano State alone, but across the northern region. Stand before you today 
to endorse the presidential candidate of the Liberal Party, His Excellency Peter Owe. We have carefully evaluated the stances and policies of all the candidates and have come to the conclusion that His Excellency Peter Owe is the best choice for our nation. Okay, shall we just uh, make it to endorse uh, Peter Owe by Islamic clarity in not only in Kano, in the northern part of Nigeria. There is no religion in politics. We are just focused on integrity and accountability. So all of these characters, all these good behaviors, is His Excellency Peter Obi of Labour Party. He is the one of the all of the presidential candidates that has it. So that, that is why we Islamic preachers, we know the East, we know the East, we are here to solidarity and endorse to defeat Obi as a president federal of the Federal Republic of Nigeria in this coming election 2023. Well, Dr. Batifita Obi has had successful campaigns in the northern region. I mean, people are calling this endorsement by Islamic preachers a game changer. But also my first story is condemnable. The act of those hoodlums attacking his vehicle. Like Dira Onifade said, it, you know, it might have been orchestrated by political opponents. I thought that, you know, it was very absurd that that happened to Peter Obi. And, you know, the authorities should look into it. Well, one of the major concerns about this uh, electoral process in 2023 is about the threat of violence mm. and the menace of insecurity. And when you talk about the possibility of violence, it can be before the election, during the election, and after. And that's why, you know, consistently we've been calling on the security agencies to ensure that there is peace. Now, the there is a National Peace Committee led by General Abdul Salami Abubakar, Bishop uh, Hazan Kuka, the Sultan of Sokoto, and others. That National Peace Committee has met with the political parties twice. Mm. Now, uh, agreements are signed there with all the parties promising to ensure that there is peace. But one point we have made is that, yes, the political leaders may say we will give peace a, a, a chance. How ah, about the rank and file? Mm. This is a major concern because you don't want a situation whereby the election is derailed either before or during or after. And what we are seeing, what happened to uh, uh, Mr. Peter B and his uh, entourage in Casino State is an indication that as we get closer to the election, people are going to get more and more desperate. And I think, you know, this must be a wake up call for the security agencies, particularly the police. And second, uh, political parties and the candidates themselves, uh, in this case Mr. Pitobi, they probably need to pay closer attention to their personal security. Uh, it's, it's a good thing that uh, Mr. Pitobi uh, did not suffer any direct physical harm, uh, but vehicles we were told were destroyed, uh, windscreens were, you know, uh, shattered by persons who were throwing big stones at his convoy as he, he made his way to the airport and even at the venue of, of that uh, rally. That's one leg of it. The second leg of the matter is his endorsement uh, by those uh, Islamic uh, preachers who came together and said, well, in terms of character and integrity, <clears throat> this is not about religion. They think that Mr. P2B Absolutely. is their choice. Well, this is a season of endorsements. After all, the other day, a group of bishops, <laughs> whether, whether fake or real, you know, whether properly uh, clothed or otherwise, you know, also, you know, identified with a particular candidate, presidential uh, candidate. So you are likely to see bishops, you are likely to see uh, preachers, because all these persons too, I mean, they are Nigerians, they are part of it, and they have the right to identify with whoever they like. But for Mr. Peter Obi, it must be gratifying mm -hmm. that in, you know, in parts of the North, uh, he has people endorsing him, and it's uh, you know an indication of the uh, you know uh, impact that he has been able to make you know in terms of his uh, campaigns. Nobody gave him a chance in terms of structures, but he keeps saying at his campaigns that the people are the real structures, mm -hmm. and you know uh, I, I, we see how that works yeah. out. Uh, at the end of the day. All right. Yeah. Rufai, I heard you cracking up with that Peter Obi's uh, video. Uh, <laughs> when, 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 when did Peter Obi start throwing water, water, I said. 
they are called capital. <laughs> Jesus Christ, a lot of water, water, <laughs> straight bullets everywhere. Mr. Peter, be please. We are calling for fairness. Don't throw stray bullets. Focus on what you campaign yeah. about. Yeah. You know, tell people what you will do for them. We yeah. can't allow people to be dragged into throwing stray bullets. You know, we always caution other people, and this is out there. Please, we, we need to caution our politicians. It's not about attacking the opponent. Mm. Talk about the policies. Talk about the ideas. Please, that's what we want in this campaign. And for those that try to attack the convoy, we have, we have, you see, we have normalized violence in this country, which is a sad idea. I remember when Atiko Abaka's convoy too was stoned yes. in Borno. Till today, they are still investigated. Have they arrested people? No. So those that did this, Mr. Peter, to be investigated, to be arrested also, because this cannot continue in this country. Absolutely. You know, we can't keep having a case where all of this happens. But please, Mr. Peter, be focus <laughs> on the ideas and the agenda. Don't even talk about the opposition. Don't even talk about, don't even abuse anybody. Focus on the things you're going to do for now. Just like I advise the opposition, stop abusing Peter Obi and all your other opposition candidates. Focus. All right. Because you see, the more you abuse people in a crowd, they are jeering you on, but you are sowing the deceit of discord and enmity in that crowd. And that's what leads to people stoning each other. Please, tamper it down. <laughs> and please, for somebody that threw the biggest shade yesterday, that was unnecessary. We'll take that okay, you take that home, oh my God. <laughs> right. that so, was, <laughs> if I, I actually think it's a bit difficult for you to be in a campaign without making reference to what the other person had done. I do agree, you don't have to insult the person, but you can't speak to the issues or what they stood for, or you know the things that they did. He talked about contracts awarding and the likes and said he wouldn't do that. I think that's a bit different from saying that I cannot mention his name because it's not worth the, you know, the, the, the saliva that I used to say it. There's a difference between insulting someone based on their health and all that, and actually talking about what they did or what they stood for. Now, in terms of the um, attacks, this reminds me of yesterday, the headlines around um, Mr. Tonya Cole, what's going on in state. This should not be an election of violence. And so you wonder, it would be great to see what security agencies and INEC are doing, especially in regards to investigating these claims that the opponents are sending thugs against these candidates. We have to come to a point in our nation's history where we don't have to have elections that are characterized by violence, not just, not, not just physical violence, but even verbal violence, as we've often said on this show. So um, Mr. Abtoyenko has asked the president to declare a state of emergency in, in River State because the opposition party of the governor, or all opposition parties of the ruling party, are, are consistently being prevented from going to you know to their rally grounds, speaking to the people, and different you know um, things are being signed, and it is just obstructive to people exercising their right to campaigning. We must deal with this decisively and to speak to the people. Do not be used as a tool for destruction. At the end of the day, it's just a game of politics. Right. All right, we shall take another story. Social media was awash with reactions on Tuesday after the spokesperson of the People's Democratic Party's Presidential Campaign Council, Dino Melaye, posted a video of himself deliberately falling to the ground repeatedly during the party's presidential campaign rally held in Delta State with the caption, Amy Lokon Olule in an apparent dig at the presidential candidate of the All Progressives Congress, Bola Ahmed Tinubu. Well, in the video, Dino sang along to the controversial song composed by some members of the National Association of Sea Dogs, known as the Pirates Confrontanity, to mock the APC flag bearer. Let's take a look at the video before we take some reactions. <laughs> This is who you were referring ah. to. But let me take some uh, <laughs> tweets quickly. Well, this is from uh, Jerry, who wrote, Egbo, 
This is unacceptable in a modern democratic dispensation. I am not an APC supporter. This is absurd and portrays incivility. Respect your elders. The giver of good health is God. You may find yourself in such circumstances. Life is unpredictable. Politics should be played decently. Well, Sports Root, I'm watching a 49-year-old man make a fool of himself all in the name of trolling an opponent. And I don't see the funny part of it. Dino Melaye falling on the podium twice, trying to mimic Tinubu is another height of stupidity. Well, another tweet there goes, Guess one thing I will miss after this election season is the different drama displayed by these politicians from Wike to Tinubu and then to this. It would have been better if they focus more on how to reduce the 133 million Nigerians in multi-dimensional poverty and other issues. <laughs> I I mean, it's quite so, Mr. Fesos Kiamu yes. replied to that thing. He said, Obama's rival in 2008 election, Senator John McKay had a deformity in one hand. Obama showed him respect, never mocked him, but there was a VP candidate laughing as a clown as somebody fall on stage to mock on that candidate. It's the height of imbecility. They go to Nigeria as an apology. That's Fesos Kiamu's report. You did. I think Mr. Dino Melai should not have done that. It is wrong. We can't keep doing that. We can't reduce this. Just like I said for Mr. Peter Ogi Obi again, we can't reduce these campaigns to vitro. There are a lot of issues that can be talked about. We can't reduce country to vitro about uh, this and no, no. <laughs> I will be objective and I'll be very fair. Yeah. Well, but going further, an extreme Mr. Kiamo's tweet. Mm -hmm. So is it an indication now? that something might be wrong with the candidate because you said, oh, you are making an allusion to John McCain. And secondly, this is why I've always gone back to the point that every presidential candidate must produce health records. Well, all right. John McCain couldn't raise his hand beyond a certain point. Do you know why he couldn't? The whole of America knew that John McCain was a POW, mm -hmm. was a prisoner of war, and his hand was bit, badly beaten and damaged. And that's why he can't raise his hand beyond a certain less extent. What is the medical record of all of our presidential we candidates? Always ask. And that's what we are asking again this time around. Dr. Vati, really quickly. Well, it's not only Professor uh, Skiyamo that has complained. There's also one Dr. Joseph Ono who says, uh, you know, uh, Tino Melaye is suffering from uh, hubris, uh, <laughs> falling down all over the place. Well, Dino Melaye is 49, 50 or so. Well, he should be careful how he falls down, up and down. Uh, so that he doesn't go and have a sleep disc in the in the in the process of trying to uh, you know uh, mimic or uh, you know troll somebody to Absolutely. use your word. So he has to be careful. Nobody will get a word for falling down. No. You know whether for comic.